get up. Oh, behind them again. Come on. There's two fish in that right there. Now behind them again. Oh, dismal. Well, I've calculated that I need to cast about right there and then it'll get time. Oh, he was just having 35 calculating casts. Now oh, there. We had a fly rod, it'd be so easy as a dead sitter right off the bank, could just plonk it in front of him, but didn't bring the bloody fly rod, we just bought the spinner. I mean, tricky, eh? You'll probably have to put it up past him and try to bring him back down this way, you might get one shot at it, because if you go past him, he'll see you. You've got to actually get the lure and the water bro to catch him. <laughs> oh, mate. Oh, 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 oh. Don't, don't, is he going to chase it? Damn it. Did he take it? Oh, he's seen you. Shit. He might be alright. Whoa, that was the one hiding in there. Is that the same one? Oh, no. Same one. Gunned it downstream, spooked him. There you go. So even spin fishing requires a, a certain level of skill to be able to place that spinner exactly where you want it. Should have had him, Charlie Horse. That was dinner right there. Nah, nothing in those top pools. Just one sitting in here. We actually ran over some monsters in the boat. of wood to keep his fire going.
big who can these Bloody winds be blowing from the forest into the river all afternoon and right on dark it changes and starts blowing back into the forest so I think that wind's just gone and screwed us. Oh, no big stag prints. No big old mature. Hudang is just spiker prints. Should have got out and checked, see if there's any big prints here. Instead of just stopping here, we just saw all the deer prints and went, oh, there's probably a stag in there somewhere. Bloody deer started barking from up in the bush there. It just went again. Must have smelled us or seen us or heard us or sixth sensed us. Needless to say, outsmarted us anyway. Balls, alright, we're gonna go downstream and have another quick look at a clearing down there. We're going to go find a good campsite downstream if we can't, we'll just go back up camp near the truck spot a night jet boating. Well, we're not camping, <laughs> we are jet boated all the way back to the truck and then got the boat on the truck, it is 10.20 so we got a two hour drive to get back home. Also we didn't shoot a spiker on the side of the river under the spotlight, did we? No. No. And then boy didn't run after it and we didn't take his back legs and his back stakes, eh? No. Nah. That never happened. Oi, where are you going with that? Are you gonna go bury that? Goodness, I do a lot of driving. I think my cost just almost doubled. Gonna have to do less driving, I think. The price of gas is gonna be cheaper to just smoke crack and run everywhere soon.
is wallow for the roar. Pretty exciting. <whistles> Well, pretty exciting. It's an exciting time of year to be up in the hills with the roar starting at any moment. Any moment it could start, you just don't know. Got to be into win. Yes, and it's the time of year to be looking for that wandering stag. March is the month of the wandering stag. A full moon's in another five days. And then we fly into our raw block. But that stuff there is honey dew. It grows on the beech trees. Most of you fellas probably already knew that, but Charlie didn't, so I was just calling him. And the wasps eat that little bit of honey dew on the end of that here. Yeah, there you go. Some pretty much useless information. I have to say, pretty disappointed with the lack of deer sign up here. Used to be quite good hunting up here, but that 1080's just ruined it. There's a couple of goat prints, a couple of deer prints. We've seen that one wallow. We followed those tracks up from the riverbed. It's just, it's a real shame.
safe as houses. Oi, don't get all dirty, you mongrel. <laughs> Oi, get out of the mud. Hey, it's not that exciting. Well, no deer anyway. Good work, though. Well, that was the end of the episode. Cut it a bit short. The rest of the time we spent walking around the forest, hoping to get on a roaring stag and bring you some roaring action, but never happened. Found a few wallows, that was it. So now we're packing up to go into South Westland or to Kaikoura, I'm not sure which one. Got all of my gear laid out, trying to figure out what I'm gonna take. Do I take a tent or a fly sheet, a mosquito net? I don't know. Finished the jerky. Here we go, jerky. So I cut my meat about that size. Bear in mind my hands are pretty big. So what's that, just over a centimetre thick. Uh, I quite often cut it in strips, but this time I'm cutting it in little squares. Pretty easy. Uh, you can marinate it if you want, or you can just leave it as is. Bit of salt and pepper. I sometimes marinate mine, sometimes I don't. At this time I just chucked the marinade in, put some ginger, a bunch of salt in this one, and pepper, mainly because we're going to eat it during the raw, so I put some pink Himalayan rock salt in there, so get really thirsty and stay hydrated. And then 12 hours in a dehydrator, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. I'm just going to put it onto two. Second setting, three settings. Low, medium, high, medium. Gonna put it on a medium and uh, let it go for 12 hours and then I'll check it tomorrow. And because I'm gonna eat this stuff relatively quickly, I don't want it too hard. Uh, if you're gonna go weeks on end in the hills without fridge or whatever, then you wanna make it quite dry so it lasts, but I want this stuff to be chewy because I think chewy jerky is better. Give it a bash. It's all packed and bagged, also made some stew. Didn't have any vacuum sealer bags, so I froze in the big hump, so I'm defrosting it so I can reseal it in vacuum sealer bags and refreeze it. I quite often do that on these big trips. If we can helicopter drive or boat stuff in, we'll pre-freeze the meals every night. So I just made a big massive batch of stew, so that'll do us for half the week. Just get back from hunting, and put the stew on the oven, pull it out of the chili bin in a, a vacuum seal bag and cook it. It just makes life so much easier back at camp. Even got a toaster. So yes, Dan the man got the Roaring Billy block and invited me and Charlie to go along with him. But it's first period and it's meant to be storming for the first half of the week and then we might get three fine days of hunting. So I'm trying to figure out whether to go down there or go to Kaikoura where it's going to be dry and there's more chance the stags are going to be roaring on the east coast. Problem with the wet bush is it's really hard to film and I can use the GoPro but I can't use the big camera so when we get close into the stags the GoPro just doesn't cut it because you can't see the animals so I don't know what to do. I've got to figure out in the next hour or so exactly what I'm going to do. Man, I tell you, when you get more gear it's really hard to choose what to take because Never used to be a gear freak, but now I've just got gear coming out of my ears because I've got kids and mates and blimmin' egg. All right. Thanks for watching. Sorry it cut a bit short, but you guys probably didn't want to see footage of me just walking around in the forest looking at trees. Hopefully we'll bring you some roaring stag action. If not, there'll be plenty more adventures and plenty of ground covered in the search for a big roaring stag. I'll catch up in 10 days, 10 days before I get out of the hill, so... 11, 12, two weeks. Give me two weeks for the next episode because it'll take a few days to edit it. Cheer.